you are not technically allowed to wholesale your juice to other people that's raw and unpasteurized, right? right? And so particularly if you if you've built a really big brand for yourself around town, um, like Southern Press Juicery has, um, you know, for us, it's really a risky business to be a household name in our town, not be pasteurizing our juice and have really strong wholesale partners. Um, because at any point, anybody could, you know, fire the set the fire alarms off and and turn us in for for selling wholesaling unpasteurized juice. And so for us, that was really a big deal too. Now, of course we did as most juice bars around the world do, um, because it, it's such a limiting factor to only be able to sell your product direct to the consumer. So if you're, mm -hmm. you're, if you're making the product in house and you're selling direct to the consumer, it doesn't have to be pasteurized. But the second you introduce that product to somebody else and they're handing off that juice, it needs technically legally to be pasteurized. Um, so for us, it was it was also just a, a liability standpoint of being a really recognizable brand around town and knowing in our gut that we weren't pasteurizing um, and having, you know, really large scale wholesale accounts. Now, they weren't, you know, a Whole Foods or something like that, but they were large, locally owned, you know, um, businesses around town that were also very visible. So it was just like, OK, how long are we going to play this game of... <laughs> Is anybody gonna? Is anybody gonna turn us in? And so that was part of our decision to go with an HPP line as well. And like I said, I may come on in in three episodes and say, "Hey, we pulled HPP. We tried, and it wasn't right for us." But for at least where we are in our business right now, it's been worth it to at least you know try it and see if it causes um, yeah. more of a problem from us from a business model um, than it does help us. 